Welcome back to Behind the Blog. I'm Ross Levitan alongside Brandon Piller, and today we are joined by a man who is no problem in mixing it up with other fan bases. It's Sends Buzz. You can follow him on Instagram, Twitter, probably on Discord as well, you wild man. Welcome to Locked On Senders. How you doing, my man? I'm doing all right. How you doing, boys? Oh, we're doing fantastic. Obviously, everyone knows you as the graphic designer extraordinaire who, as I said, isn't afraid to mix it up. Do you have one that stands out more than others when it comes to a fan base that you enjoy getting involved with? Habs fans, man. Bro, I feed on their tears. Their tears keep <laughs> going. But like, it's, it's, I feel like that's a hot take itself because it's like, Everyone, like everyone that's older than me, they're like, "Oh, you know what? Leafs fans, they absolutely can't stand Leafs fans, right?" I started watching hockey in like this decade, right? So I've seen battles against the Habs, right? Yep. My mom's a Habs fan, so I poke fun at her all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, no, let's not get into that. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's like every single time I come up against Habs, every time we play the Habs, every time we destroy the Habs, you know, I poke fun at them. You know, it's just it's a good time. So you must have had a blast with the whole Timmy Brendan Gallagher situation like that. Is, that's all time it. for you. Loved it because it was even better because like there's so many pictures of Brendan Gallagher falling down, right? Yeah, so and know, videos. <laughs> exactly. I I clipped some of them up. I threw them on there. I got like everyone loved it. Everyone ate it up. I got some salty hats fans, and you know what? <laughs> that's, that's how it goes. I, I like that he, he never ignores it. You'll engage with every single one. Absolutely, man. Like. I feel like Leafs fans, there's obviously centric ones. There's Has fans that will go after anybody and everybody, right? And I feel like, you know what? We can be nice sense fans too. But, like, someone has to step up, right? I'll step up. I don't care, right? People just know me as Suns Buzz. They can't find me. There you go. <laughs> someone has to buzz in their yeah, ear, right? Hey, That's just it. Buzz. Everyone's buzzing. <laughs> How would you come up with the, with the name? Was it as simple as that? You know what? It was actually uh, one of my buddies on Twitter, Nick Dumoulin. Right. So what was happening, I was doing a little bit of like freelance work, freelance design work. And then, yeah, like I have my personal account at the time and I was private and I was like throwing hot take after hot take. People were getting pissed off with me. <laughs> and then at one point, I think I was doing nothing. Then Nick was like, I got this uh, handle, sends buzz. He gave me the account and I took off from there. It was pretty fun like that. That's awesome. Man. And yeah, th- buzz like that's that just rolls off the tongue you're buzzing in everybody's ears and i i feel like that does make sense so ross for you and i the least fans are where we have our our issues because when we really started getting into hockey and following along yeah it was the least versus sends in playoffs and we all know how that went but for you buzz it was that changed my mind though twitter's honestly changed my mind a little bit i'm probably yeah, the- buzz man yeah. But the Habs people in person, normally I don't have an issue with. Like when when we were at the when we were at the Sens, right. the Habs game, they were all cool. It was fine, yeah. not a big deal. When I was at the Bell Center, uh, nobody gave me a hard time, even though the Habs won five one. So I, I've got a pass on Habs fans for now. It's the least fans that the entitlement and the the feeling that they have so much accomplished when they have nothing accomplished uh, yeah. that's what really gets me so uh, that's where it's tough i mean the habs at least the habs can say they've been to a stanley cup final very recently like that that's, that's something they can back up their arguments the leafs haven't won a playoff round in a long time in a long yeah. time. 18 years who's counting yeah so, there like, you go that, that's kind of where my like my beef comes in with Habs fans right it's because we haven't had i haven't seen anything with the leafs Right. That's that's like that was when I was like four years old. Right. Yeah. Like the standard death. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And then so like, yeah, even longer. They haven't been in the playoffs. But anyways, uh, after that, it was like I think I remember like the first time like I actually got into hockey was that it was the 2012 playoffs, 2013. The line 2013. Right? That was the sick Great time like, to get into it. Wow. I'm a 11, 12 year old kid and I see people throwing hands. I see Matt Cassian. That was pretty epic. I was like, wow. Yeah. So that was like the first time my mom was like screaming. And I was like, you know what? I like this. This is pretty cool. <laughs> so the first game he would have ever been locked into was when Eric Griba sent Lars Eller into Eric the Eric Griba sent Lars Eller. You know what? That That's a Twitter story that I had another thing. I, I put, I've, I've crossed the line sometimes. At one point, I think I posted that picture. Like, uh, oh, that was, yeah, that was a really terrible thing I did. And I don't you got to learn from it, though. You got to learn from exactly, it. Exactly, right? That's the thing. I I I I say everything with chess. I don't delete stuff, right? Like if I 
put something out there, I'll live with it. Like, I think I had the Ty Boucher tweet where it's like, yeah, he's going to score 100 points. Bro, it's yeah. still your pin tweet. Yeah. <laughs> See, but I say it with chess. I say it with chess. <laughs> I say it with chess. So I, I, I want to bring this. Let's let's rewind it back a bunch. You, you mentioned your mom's a Habs fan. So is uh, like is hockey a big part part of your family? Did you grow up playing? Brothers, sisters, parents? Like how did hockey get integrated into your daily life? You know what? Like, so I'm from. I'm obviously like, I'm I'm uh, South Asian. Yeah, it's called South Asian. So I'm South Asian descent, obviously, right? So I grew up watching cricket, Premier right. League. I started. Well, I've watched all of, like the other sports with really bad English content. We didn't I didn't speak English until I was like four or five years old, like when I was going to kindergarten, right? right. So like it wasn't a really big thing. My mom's from uh, Montreal, Long Bay. Okay. And so she had like she's like, Oh, Patrick Wad, this is still a thing that I found out Patrick Wad retired like twenty years ago. I was like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching highlights of him. I was like, Wow, this is hockey. Yeah, I'm not impressed. I'm like, Okay. <laughs> like, so exactly. I played soccer growing up, I played cricket growing up, I watched it. But then it was, you know, I think when I got into the Sens was that playoff. But the first thing I remember, like, watching hockey was, like, it was the gold medal game at the 2010 Olympics, right? The Crosby nice. goal, right? That was – so, yeah, I didn't have any of that growing up. I love the Olympics, right? The Olympics come. It's like you just watch everything, you know, get patriotic. And then, well, yeah, it was just that, – that really got me into hockey at that point, right? How can you and Habs fans get along? Do you when Team Canada's involved? When Team Canada's involved? You put your differences aside? I think I can put my differences aside, yeah. right? Thomas Shabbat's going to be team captain, right? So we're going to be leading that team anyways, right? <laughs> yeah, basically just like hockey sense once again. There you go. I can't actually stand hockey if it's not sense hockey. Like I try watching World Juniors. I'm like, wow, this is one period gone. Cool. And then, yeah, it's like I, I lose interest real quick, right? Nice. So you're just I a love, Sens guy. Exactly. I'm a big Sens guy. Sure. It's the same thing with uh, football, uh, soccer. Yeah, I got mixed up. Um, but it's like if I'm not watching my team, I can't actually watch it. Like my interest just drops a little bit, you know? So are you, are you just following Ottawa then? Do you follow the prospects as well? Or, I mean, your 100-point Boucher take, you don't follow them that closely. No, I don't follow them that closely. I mean, <laughs> when it comes to prospects, it's like – I well, actually, I work at uh, Lansdowne now. So, like, yeah, I, I get to see the players walk by. I saw Shane Wright walk by me at one point. That was so cool, right? <laughs> um, but other than that, I mean, some of the prospects follow me on uh, Instagram, so – Hey, it's because they like they like seeing you get in the mix. They they, exactly. they love it. Uh, other than that, I'm like, there's other people that can follow the prospects. I like watching hockey. Like, I like right? that. Yeah. Who's uh, who's gonna lead the Sens in scoring this upcoming season? The Brinkat. Like, like is it going to be anybody else? Is anybody else that level of like at that level yet? I don't think so. He's I like, mean, there's two assists for every goal. So if the Brinkat yeah. scoring the goals, you think Timmy's gonna get a couple apples? I think Timmy's going to be right behind him, but I think because Debrink is going to be that trigger man, you know, I, I feel like he's going to have a pretty good year with Timmy. All right, so we've got two guys on the same line. Who on the top line, or 1A, 1B, who out of Norris, Kachuk, Batherson will have the most points this upcoming season? Yeah, that's going to be close. Ooh, you know what? I'm, I think it's going to be Batherson, right? Damn, all right. You know what? That first half of the season, he was something else. When Batherson's healthy... We saw an all-star Bathurst. Brady Kachuk didn't get any of those votes. Josh Norris wasn't getting any of those votes. They stepped up later in the season, but a full healthy season of Bathurst. I'm just saying, I think he can be, I, he's going to be really big on that line. You think he's going to be an X factor throughout the league too? Ooh, and I feel like that line just, that line is that X factor in itself, yeah. right? Like if, you, if you're missing Bathurst, you kind of lose some of that creativity if you lose Brady, you lose that physicality. If you lose Josh Norris, you lose some of that like clinical finishing, right? I feel like clinical that clinical might... finishing. I like that exactly, right? So it's like you're just like if you remove elements of that line, like it's it's not going to work as well as it could, you know? Oh yeah, you need everyone to wait for it. You need everyone to get together and shake things up. Shake and things make up. Hey, <laughs> it all starts with the captain. It captain. all starts with the captain, and then when it's cool in the gang, eh? Um, man, Brady Kachuk, back-to-back years, leading the Ottawa Senators in point scoring, but you got Alex Dabrinkit 
in that spot right now. What What's his point total going to be? Let's pray for a healthy season. Let's say 82 games. What's Alex DeBrinket going to put up? All right, 82 games with 82 games of Timmy being his center. All Let's right? do it. Yeah. Right, and then 82 games of Claude Giroux on the other side of him. Right. Yeah. I'm saying, all right. You see 40 goals, 50 assists. We're going to see 90 Ooh. points at least. I'm going. And to what does it. that mean? What does that mean for his contract, though? That's the thing, right? Like <laughs> that. I mean, the way his contract was structured, it was for this kind of production, right? They wanted to Chicago wanted to see his production jump, like how like. Big time, exponentially. right? Exponentially. Yeah. Exponentially, thank you, right? Like, you're not getting $9 million for another, what, 60, 50, 50, 60, 70 points that he got, like, when he signed the contract, right? There were They were hoping for that contract to go up. I think that Dabrinkit's going to be, like, if we want to lock him up, you have to you have to pay him, right? Like, this guy, his best season is past our Brady Kachuk's best season, right? His you have to pay him at that point. $9 million, 9.5. I think he touches 9.510. It's going to be up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I he mean, is, it's, it's for good reason, right, Pilsy? If he is, it means that he's producing at the level exactly. that should demand that. All I know, if if he hits uh, Buzz's projections here and gets 90 points, that's going to be an easy arbitration hearing for uh, to bring Cat and his <laughs> agent when the, if and uh, – when the sends uh, head head to arbitration if they can't get a big deal done here. But before before we dive too much into the on ice uh, product, this is the behind the blog series. So I still want to get a little more uh, into why, like when you got this handle from your buddy Nick. What are your visions for this? Like when you get the handle, you said you you were on your personal account, then you get this handle, and you're like, all right, now I'm really gonna go off. What kind of is your idea for it at the time and? What are you hoping for in the future here? Are you just hoping to be that that sends guy that's buzzing around, or is there some something further in your sights here? You know what? It was kind of like it was either I piss people off on my main account, or I piss people off like without my name attached to the account, right? Right. But people know my name now. It's really funny. I was in Kanata the other day. I was walking around. I got out of a booster juice. Someone in the parking lot. Yo, sends buzz. I'm like, yeah. See, like there you go. Like, I I'm like again like. I grew up with cricket. I grew up with I, uh, Premier League. I grew up with the Raptors in Toronto, right? It's like I, I've seen big, good cultures, right, around the sport. And I think when I got that account, it was like, you know what? Like, there's not – like, we're pushing a hockey culture here, but there's not, like, that sense of, like, hardcore – well, there's obviously hardcore fans, right? But there's not, like, a big – like, they don't assemble often, right? This kind of, the city was really like disconnected for a little bit. I felt that in the fandom. And so like when I got the account, I was like, you know what? Like I'll be the outlet. If somebody I'll throw something out there, I'll throw a hot take out. Everyone can respond. It doesn't matter who. But then it's like at the same time, like if I put my own thought out there, I'm gonna defend it with my life. Like if you come after, if you pick apart my thing, I'm gonna pick apart your arguments back, right? So that's I'm just, awesome. Yeah. We're pulling it up right now here. Sends buzz underscore. You use your Instagram more than your Twitter, eh? I do. I do. Love Man, you, you got some sick designs too. Do you make all these graphics? Oh, yeah. I, uh, what is it? Uh, Everyday Sends. He got, he's, once he started going to Photoshop, I was like, oh my God, this stuff is beautiful. I want to learn yeah. how to do it. Yeah, nobody knows this. Everyday Sends is like one of my biggest inspirations. He was on, uh, Instagram, we have, there's a lot, there's a whole community on Instagram, by the way. It's really cool. But like Everyday Sense, he was like, he started this. He came out with epic content, yep. great designs. And then we have like a group chat of designers for Sense stuff. And we just talk about, we just throw bounce ideas off each other, throw content ideas at each other. And yeah, I'm just, I'm out here trying to like overtake EDS, but it's not happening anytime soon. But yeah. <laughs> So who's in? Give a shout out to everyone who's in that uh, that group chat. Oh, definitely. All the designers. Here we go. Here we go. I got the group chat out here. Let's see this. We got Sends Insight, Puck Talk Sends. We got Sends Empire. We got Primetime Sends, Sim for Stutzel. Yeah, those are five off the top of my head. Sends for Life's definitely. Memesy, Cody Memesy. There's a lot of guys. Uh, Meanest Pi RV. Like we. Like, every, <laughs> like it's, awesome. it's, just, it's a bunch of like ex senators, and then they turn their names into with a meme. Is like it's amazing. Like honestly, some of the people on Instagram are absolutely creative, right? It's a younger 
fan base on Instagram, right? And I feel like that's more of the people that I kind of like associate myself. They don't they don't pick apart like anything I say on Twitter like that, like people on Twitter do. So it's like it's a really it's a really cool group of people, honestly. Yeah, definitely a different vibe between the two uh, social media sites. Now, are are you hoping to kind of continue forward with photoshopping? Or are you going to get into uh, more video editing, or what's the goal going forward? For well, I'm I'm doing my university stuff, right? So it's hard to like get into new stuff all the time. But like photoshopping, yeah. it's like, especially with the pandemic, it was like there's nothing to do. So yeah. why not like like I see a picture online, let me make this even prettier. And most of those pictures were Brady Kachuk and I made him even prettier. It's hard to do it, but I've managed to do it. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, it's, what was the question again? I've kind of rambled. <laughs> oh, I was just asking if, uh, no worries. That happens to me all the time. I was just asking if you were going to eventually get into video editing or if you, Photoshopping oh, yeah. is where you're, where you're focused on. Photoshopping is where I'm focused on definitely right now. I have like a little, like sometimes I do freelance work for a uh, hockey DB, right? Okay, so like, nice. Yeah, it got me into that and I kind of want to stay true to that. Like a lot of people need graphics like that. I try my hand at video graphic, but I don't have the patience for that, honestly. Yeah, yeah. It, it's tough. We did a bit of that in school, but uh, I think Ro- Ross and I can fairly say video editing was not our calling card. No, nah, it was. <laughs> It looks really difficult. Like it's getting, tough. yeah. Like I have so much respect for the people that can throw out a video every single day. That's different, right? Like the patience needed to do that transitions, make sure your audios work, make sure your videos link up perfectly. It's different, right? It's interesting. So, Sense Buzz, let me ask you this. I'm pulling up a graphic right now. Out of these <laughs> players, here we go. Nice. Who? is going outside of Ridley Gregg. I want to know actually between these three in the middle. Yeah. Your thoughts your thoughts on who's going to make the biggest impact at the NHL level. You know, okay, at the NHL level or on the sense? Like let's NHL level. NHL level. Sokolov, definitely the shark. That's the right answer. I you definitely can tell this guy's listening to the show. There yep. you go. I definitely think you know what shout Cole Reinhardt. This guy's a workhorse. But anyways, uh Sokolov, you're gonna if like, unfortunately, there's no – like, for Sokolov to do well, he needs a middle six role, top six yeah. role. Like, that's the way he's performing in Belleville. You can't throw a skilled guy in the top six of Belleville and stick him on the fourth line. You can't do that and expect for him to, like, continue his trend, right? If you take Sokolov and throw him to, I don't know, Seattle maybe, I feel like he would look so good in Seattle, right? Like, if you take – if any of these players, right, they're going to get so much opportunities elsewhere in the league. But I feel like Sokolov has that high – like, a lot of people don't see that skill, but people forget that even, like, when he was 20, this guy was, like, 10 points off of Lafreniere, and that was crazy, right? Lafreniere yeah. was in the queue, right? Yeah. So, like, he's a special player, right? Yeah, I like him a lot. Now, let's say Alex Formanton remains unsigned. Now, this is coming out on Sunday, so there's still the potential that he signs. We're recording this Monday, September 5th, but if Alex Formanton is unsigned when training camp starts, who's the first person you would put? with Pinto and Joseph on the third line? Would it be Sokolov? Would you move Greg over to the wing? Would you put in a Lodin or someone else maybe that we're not even thinking of right now? You know what? I'd have to – I'd definitely wait until this rookie tournament and this uh, training camp is over. But so that Angus Crookshank can get the so job. That Angus Crookshank can get in there. There I it love is. Crookshank. Everyone loves – you can't hate Crookshank, right? No. No. And so I – but I honestly think Formington's – if Formington stays unsigned, right – I think that Sokolov's done enough. He's led that B Sense team two years in a row. He's been really good, like surprisingly good. And on sometimes, like we had an e- ECHL team in the AHL, right? That team was just a um, total mess at some points of the year for uh, during COVID. But I think Sokolov, especially with the off season he's having, like I've seen some of these pictures; they're insane, right? <laughs> yeah. I've seen some of these like clips of him like benching and stuff. I'm like, okay, well, this guy's big. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think Sokolov's done so much uh, that he deserves. Like, if, if, we're, if like without the camp, I think Sokolov still deserves to be seen first. Like, we it's going to be make or break year for Sokolov, right? Like, yeah. How long is he going to stay in the uh, AHL? Yeah, it's fair. I mean, fifty points last year is his first full season because the first one was, you know, so torn apart with all the stops and starts and COVID shortened and no playoffs in the AHL. So. 
Yeah, it's a big year, no doubt, for him uh, in the minors. Pilsy, what else you got for our buzz? Well, I'll uh, I'll take things off the ice to the bench. Now, we've talked a bunch on the show. The slow start cannot happen for a third straight year for DJ Smith. He was a guy brought in. They kind of knew he was a player's coach. He's going to keep the room light. He's going to keep the guys motivated, working hard. But now keeping things light and having the team say, oh, wow, they put up a good effort is not the goal anymore. Now they're pushing for wins. They want to be playing in meaningful games. Do you believe DJ Smith is the guy that can take them to that level uh, come playoff time? Or where do you where do you fall on that for as far as the coaching goes? I think that everything that DJ does, he's always been his hands have always been tied, whether it been yeah. we're not spending enough on the roster, right? We'd be so under the cap floor at some points, right? Whether it's management keeping Brandstrom down and then giving him Nikita Zaitsev and Victor Mete and telling him to figure it out. I feel like DJ Smith, like some people are like, oh, if it's a slow start, get him out of here. I think that if we're going to give DJ Smith like an actual season to see what he can do with new players, and if we get another top four defenseman, that changes the entire team. Like we've been such a team that like defends so low in our zone, five guys low, and we've been playing counterattacking hockey, right? That... Now, if you're telling him, you know what, you have to be dynamic, you guys have to hold possession of the puck. Brady Kachuk hasn't seen that yet, right? I mean, at some points he saw that, but like we've been counterattacking for five years now, right? I think I, I feel like I give I give him until December, see how we're doing, right? Like there's obviously some things like the Forsberg and Talbot, that's gonna be it's gonna we we've gotta look in, we gotta see what kind of goaltending we have, we gotta see what the decor is looking like. We got to see if there's injuries, right? Like if suddenly like knock on wood, like three guys in that top six fall out and now you have Alex Formanton on your second line again and you're not doing well by December. It's like, it's kind of understandable at that point, right? So I, I still have a long leash for DJ. DJ's, DJ's such a great guy. Like, honestly, I, I've heard great things about him too. And you could tell the players love him, right? So at yeah. that point, why maybe- did they- Exactly. Like, why did Brady Kachuk re-sign here for seven years? He wanted things in place, and one of them was DJ Smith, right? I wouldn't piss off the captain right now, especially when, like, he... I wouldn't piss Brady off in general, right? Like, this guy's going <laughs> to kick your butt, right? So, like, yeah, I mean, it's important to him. It's important to Josh and Batherson. And he's, you can tell that the guys think so highly of him. I wouldn't rock any of their mentals. I feel like... If we don't see any improvement at all this year, right? That's when did he sign? A, he signed an extension, didn't he? DJ did, yeah. Yeah, DJ yep. did. Uh, did he? No, no. Dorian got an Pierre extension. Did. Got yeah, an extension. DJ. This is last year is uh, last deal, year I think. Contract, yeah. yeah. So I feel like you rock. You run the contract out. You run the contract out. You evaluate in the summer. It's no. Sorry, they they extended him. They did. Oh, extend okay. him. No. What what am I seeing right here? Ottawa extends DJ Smith. I'm pretty sure it's yeah. a ten-year deal. There's yeah, sorry, it will run through the end of 23-24 with oh, okay. a team option for 24-25. So you so know he's got two years left. He's got two-year extension. There you go. Like that, he's Dorian's coach, right? Yep. He's got he's got the locker room and the boy and everybody works hard for him, right? Like, what else can you ask for if they're not working hard at that point? Like, if you see some really bad performances and just more, like, mismanagement and stuff like that. I mean, this reflects bad on Dorian, who just gave him an extension, but this reflects bad on him, too. I'd, I'd give him until the end of the year until I start putting pressure on him. Like, I think before this offseason, I was bad-mouthing Dorian, and then, you know what, he fixed up. Everyone can fix up. I believe that. But, yeah, I'd give – I I'm not too bullish on – calling for his head right yeah what's gonna make or break this season for the Sens? Ooh, make or break goaltending yep. goaltending right like you can have i think matt murray had good game bad game good game bad game and then last year like you can have two bad months comes back from the ahl just like a badass it comes in and then like you know what he started playing well and then gets injured again right like you can't have goaltending like that and I feel like another thing that's not going to do go over too well is going to be one game for Forsberg, one game for Talbot. I feel like one of these guys need to like step up, take a starting spot, and then the other guy has to 
accept that he can only get into 20 or 30 games, right? Like, if you have to run with a hot hand, and then if the, if one guy looks over his shoulder and is like, oh, there's somebody else behind me, right, while he's hot, you're just going to – you're going to mess with the goalies at that point. You can't be messing with the goalies. Yeah, especially since both of these guys have something to prove in different ways, yeah. right? Like Anton Forsberg finally – got his first taste of stability and, and a real NHL contract. And on the flip side, Cam Talbot, they did him dirty in Minnesota, getting Marc-Andre Fleury and then throwing him into uh, that elimination game when he hadn't played in a long time. And then they couldn't get things done with his agent to get an extension. So he's trying to prove he's still got, uh, got some jam to him. And yeah, I'm looking at Matt Murray's game logs from last year. And the issue with last year was he, he had stretches of being really bad then one stretch of being really good, and then he finished off the season really bad, but all in kind of six-game sample sizes there. Exactly. So it, it wasn't working with with him, and now you get two stable goalies. So my next question is, and this answer, I feel like people are on different sides, and I think it's going to be close. Who's going to start more games, Talbot or Forsberg? You know what? I think Cam Talbot actually gets into some games, okay. right? I feel like, but it was kind of like Forsberg stepped out, stepped up, out of duty because Gustafson was he he wasn't playing well. He wasn't uh, ready, yeah. He wasn't ready, right? You can't throw him into a, games with crowds at that point now because he's not, he hasn't played in it in a while, right? And then Murray, he was in the AHL. I think who Sogar was sitting on the bench, Mando was sitting on the bench at some point, right? Forsberg stepped up because it's like he had that security. He's like, you know what? I'm on the bench. I'm not on the bench. I'm in the crease, right? It was his net to lose. And you know that DJ isn't going to go to Mando in midseason, right? So I think Cam Talbot, he played well with uh, Marc-Andre Fleury on his bench, right? He Like after the All-Star game, by the way, Cam Talbot, All-Star goalie, right? Yep. Exactly. Uh, even when they made that trade for Marc-Andre Fleury, his numbers still held up. Like he was still he's, – he's mentally strong. He's a veteran goalie. And I think that that's – a part where and it's a contract year right you got he has to secure another deal right so i feel like cam talbot is going to get into more games it's just a matter of is it going to be 40 is it going to be a 50 30 split or are we going to see a proper starter i like that buzz now now what i want to finish off with you with and everyone's already following you on twitter if not go right now sends buzz on twitter sends buzz underscore on instagram they did you dirty there ain't eh? not giving you just straight sends buzz I don't know who has this sends buzz account, but I can't. I'm trying. I try deleting the underscore every single month, but yeah, <laughs> IG's not giving it to me. I want that sends buzz account. That's sad, and I want Thomas Shabbat to have a great partner. Who do you start next to Thomas mm-hmm. Shabbat on the back end? Because I'm looking at your Twitter, your favorite dynamic duo. It's Martin Mathot. It's Eric Carlson. Yep. Who's gonna be that guy for Thomas Shabbat? Who's gonna be it? Mackenzie Weger? Obviously, right. Mackenzie Weger, Ottawa boy, Mackenzie Weger, right? He's going, but if we're talking about this season, you know what? I think I it's going to be it's got to be Zub. Like you got to go strongest pair, even though nobody else at the bottom four is going to be completely horrific, and I can already see that happening. Just throw Chabal and Zub out there, twenty five minutes for another year. You know what? Let's at least that's like half a game where we're going to be an amazing team, right? Like love to see it. Yeah, absolutely. And just to further your point, uh, Sens Buzz, I was looking at Cam Talbot's game logs, and I did not realize this. His last 15 games of the season, his record was 12-0-3. There you Ooh. go. Oh, damn. What's his percentage? Um, I got it right here. 920. That'll do. And I don't see the goals against average here, but two two shutouts in that span too. But yeah, 12 0 and 3 for your last 15 games of the season. That's pretty damn hot. Uh, final question for me, Sens Buzz. Thanks for joining us. Another great addition of Behind the Blog in our yes. Sens community. It, it's, and these are why we love doing this. It's so cool to see everybody's different angles and approaches to how they're going to tackle Sens content. And you definitely have a unique approach. Let's, uh, let's just say that. We love to see it. So final uh, question for me is, if you're getting Sens jersey, 
whose name you're getting on the back and what color are you getting? I love hearing people's answers mm-hmm. in an optimistic off season when there's now some fun options, not, uh, Oh, who, <laughs> who's going to get a Eric good Branson Jersey as uh, your biggest topic here. We got something a little spicier this off season. See, so I got, I got the reverse retros, the red one. I got a okay. blank one. I got in the last what in the last two months, I've got the, I got a home Batherson. Nice. And then I got a signed Belleville, like the cream barber pole Batherson. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. A nice jersey. I want to wear it. A so Batherson? Cool. Yeah. Like number seven. Number sign. seven. Sick. Yeah. There you go. B sends. It's amazing. It's like the wow. cream with the red and black. It's awesome. Yep. I would go with if I got another jersey. Ooh. You Don't know what? say Batherson White. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, it, it depends on Debrinket. Like okay. if he signs a long term deal, right? But it would be to break it white. Nice. Break it white. That would be sick. final, final question for me, Buzz. Who are your favorite Sens content creators? And don't say us. I want you to absolutely look all the way around. Who who inspires you outside of everyday Sens? You already mentioned him. I want you to give some shout outs right here to, as we end it off. Oh my god. Okay, Sens Talk. Sens Talk is yep. amazing. His designer, uh, Brian. Brian's amazing. Uh, this guy, like, he comments on all my, like, artworks, and he's just the nicest guy ever. Um, Derek Lee. Derek's amazing. Yep. This guy is so friendly with me, even though I can piss everybody off. Um, <laughs> who else? Who else? Who else? Uh, Pinto Bean. Suck my Pinto. Whatever. Yeah, she's really nice to me, too. Uh, ooh, so many people. There's so many people. Future Sickles. Everybody that works there, the podcast yep. is amazing. And Ian Mendez. Shout out Ian Mendez. This guy. There you Pinto. go. There you go. I love Ian Mendez. That's my mentor right there. Like I remember seeing him on like TSN shows on my screen, like on like Saturday games in Philly, and he would just be talking. I'm like, there you go. That's what I want to be when I grow up. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Leave it off with the goat. Hey, we appreciate it, Buzz. Thanks for coming on. Being the latest edition of Behind the Blog. Everyone's already following him. If you're not, head over to Instagram, sends buzz underscore, and please do yourself a favor. And click view all comments under some of his posts because he's not afraid to get in the mix. Also on Twitter at SendsBuzz. Thanks for doing this, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys.